I'm Andrea Mandel here at the People and Entertainment Weekly studio at the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm here with the cast and director of Carmen, a film unlike any I have seen before. This is, uh, most simply put, a modern interpretation of the opera Carmen, but it's so much more. Um, I want to start with you, our director, Benjamin Milpier. How did you come to this project and what about it made you want to set Carmen in the U.S.? Um, well, yeah, I was, I've been interested in um, directing and making short films, dance films, for a very long time. Um, I think my, you know, having been in actually West Side Story and as a dancer in New York and working a lot with Joan Robbins early on in my career, I wanted to contribute to the form with something personal and bring music and dance in this case, in this film, really a dramatic story um, with music and dance that is dreamlike uh, that felt that, you know, the connection between the narration, the music, the movement um, really worked together seamlessly to create a powerful story. Now I'm here with your stars, Melissa Barrera and Paul Mescal. Um, we first got to know your choreography uh, in Black Swan, of course. I can't imagine it's easy to take on such quite like advanced choreography as you might put into this film. So can you two talk a little bit about approaching the dance that's involved in Carmen? I mean, I, I was terrified because I'm not a dancer. I don't consider myself a dancer, but Ben has such an organic way of choreographing that he would see how I move and what I can do and choreograph according to that and make me look good which is something that's, that's a gift. Because he has a very unique style and a, a very, it feels very, um, I don't want to say pedestrian, I don't think that's the right word, but it feels very like normal, you know? And, and because we're both like normal people that aren't dancing, normal people, see what I did there? Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but he did that for us. He, he was like very conscious of like making us look good and, and and um, and making us and making it feel like it was seamless. For what me. was it like for you? Yeah, it was like it was a long process. Like I, I definitely like enjoyed kind of I wouldn't even call it dancing, but the kind of act of like physical expression and physical theater and drama school was always one of my favorite kind of modules. But um, to then be in like Australia and in a dance studio for two weeks, there was definitely a couple of sleepless nights where I was like, what am I doing? Why is this what I've chosen to do? Because it was so, like it was a really brutal two weeks, like really enjoyable, but we were like working, like as if we were dancers for two weeks and learning to like dance with each other and also to learn the choreography. So it was a big um, undertaking with one that I really enjoyed, but it uh, definitely took me a second. Was there ever a move or a particular sequence that felt like a trust exercise that you were just like, I'm just going to trust in my director's vision here, but it feels, I don't know. It was probably all of those th things. It was like an act of trust in Benjamin, but also like the dance or a lot of the dances that we had to perform together was all weight bearing and trusting in mm -hmm. essence, which I think is what's so smart about Benjamin's choreography is it is related to the characters and not just the dance, you know, it's, it's um, serving many kind of structural purposes, I think, yeah. And Benjamin, for you, how did you tailor uh, the choreography to your two stars? Well, I mean, it's something that actually I, I did learn on Black Swan, you know, when I was back, way back when rehearsing with Natalie and working with a little camera and moving around her and trying to understanding that the camera movement could actually help, you know, enhance the dancers, you know, the, the, the actors' movement. So, yeah, essentially it's really a lot about studying them, uh, how, they, how they move in space and leading from, again, how the character would move, but creating something that's completely organic. There's no difference between how they express, that, if they physically express themselves on, on screen in simple scenes and that connection to the dancing is really important. So it really, yeah, it, it, it needs to be convincing at all times. And, and it was very much, you know, I didn't want an, a character that was a Marine to suddenly look like a lyrical dancer. It should be a real man who dances, Marine who dances. And so that was something that we, we talked about a lot. 
I'm the dancing marine. So you and Natalie are both first-time dire directors now. I mean, her film came out, I think, six years ago at this mm -hmm. point. So I'm curious how you two share ideas together or collaborate in this space. Well, I mean, we actually keep things quite separate. Um, but, you know, of course, she was instrumental, I think, particularly in the editing um, section of the movie, you know, telling a woman's story. Um, and she certainly gave me a lot of wonderful advice as I was editing the film. Um, but, yeah, I think it's not like we, we do keep things quite separate when it comes to our creative worlds. And, Melissa, you were in In the Heights before this. So, you know, the world of song and dance is not foreign to you, but how is this a, little, a, a lot different, perhaps, from that experience? It's completely different. That's the thing when, you know, when a lot of uh, some people in my life were like, you're doing another musical? Like, you just did one. And I was like, you don't understand. This is, this is completely different. This is, the, this is a drama with dance and singing. You know, like it's it's more like it's a, it's like a genre of its own that Ben is creating with this style, and it it's, it was a completely different process. Within the Heights, there was a lot of dance too, but it was like salsa and you know specific choreography and like steps, and it felt like I ha it was more like a showing off thing, and this is a furthering of the of the character development and story mm -hmm. through movement. So. Yeah, it was a completely different experience. And you're both singers, but I'm curious what singing was like in, in, in under Benjamin's direction. Um, Paul, I was trying to remember if I've heard you sing before, but I'm not sure. So I'm just curious what that was like. Yeah, I, one of the first things that I remember getting in, in relation to the project was the kind of some of the songs that um, Nicholas Bertel wrote. And obviously a huge fa fan of Nicholas's work. So when that was sent through, I was like, these songs are really stunning and didn't feel like like mu like typical musical songs. They're like rooted in kind of multiple different forms because Nicholas is so smart. So yeah, and I feel like the song that uh, I perform in the film is really just like gentle and soft. It's not like a big number as such. I don't feel like there's numbers in the film. There's like sequences. They feel more like, I feel like that's the best way to describe it, but I feel like I'd be more comfortable singing than dancing, so I was more <laughs> focused on, I think, the dancing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, it's just talk a little bit more about that. I think when I talk to my dancers on, you know, the perform on stage, I always say that it's about drawing the audience in, not performing out to the audience. And I think the dances and the songs in the film are part of like their experience. It's not they're singing for the, for the audience, and it's more about drawing the audience into like their personal expression uh, of the narrative in the film. And I just wanted to end with, what do you hope audiences take away from this interpretation of Carmen, which is so modern and so different? Well, there are really two characters who are strangers in their own land. You know, it's a journey, the journey of this woman and, and, you know, looking for freedom and carried by the love and the connection to these two other women, which are her mother and Miss Silva, this sort of aunt that um, awaits her in Los Angeles. And there's a sense that while Aiden brings Carmen to life, she brings him to death and they have this moment that they've never experienced before together in the film, which is, um, I find really touching. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for joining us to talk about this film. Uh, and I, I know your premiere is today, so wish you well and congratulations. Thank, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.